Let's look at another CSCS map problem, uh, binomial coefficients. So you are just supposed to calculate binomial coefficients modulo 10 to the 9 plus 7 uh, using this formula. Uh, so in case you don't know, binomial coefficients are like a really important concept in combinatorics or counting. Uh, it's a number of ways to choose B things out of A things. Right? For example, 4 choose 2 is 6 because the number of ways to choose two numbers out of 1, 2, 3, 4 well, is 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 2, 3, 2, 4, and 3, 4. That's six ways. Um, so anyway, very important thing to know how to do. Uh, we are going to use this formula. Um, and also, we need to talk about modular arithmetic. Uh, right, so the point here is um, we need to be able to do division. Right? We understand how to do multiplication. Uh, modular 10 to the 9 plus 7 is very easy. You just multiply and then reduce mod. But how do you divide? What's uh, like 1 over 2? Um, and the answer is going to be that we can find uh, multiplicative inverses modulo finds, uh, by which I mean like 1 half is going to be the number such that 1 half times 2 is 1. And there is such a number uh, that we can find. Um, so let's let's look at that first. Uh, I'm sure we don't. for the e over 2, uh, and that's the trick. Otherwise, we just take off e is odd, then you can make it even by taking off the power of b. E. Okay, and now how do we do division? Uh, well, the way we do division is that we multiply x by the inverse of y. This is an important uh, thing to know, uh, important factor about number theory. And if you believe me about that, then here's how we can find inverse, right? So this means that x, so how x 1 minus 1 is the same thing as small of x how x mod minus 2. Right, we just take out a power of x, and we know that this thing equals 1, but this thing looks a lot like this. Right? So this is actually an inverse of x, and by the way, c. So this is actually going to be our value for one half. Is uh, what is it, 500 million and four? Um, because if you multiply 500 million and four by two, you get a billion and eight, and a billion and eight modulo a billion and seven is one. Um, so we can think of this number as being a half, uh, even though it's also 500 million and four. Right? There's sort of collisions because we only have you know, a billion plus seven numbers to work with. 
Um, so this is actually super cool. And you can do like fractions, like totally work with this, right? Like you can represent any fraction, you know, x over y with this number, the multiplication of x and the inverse of y. Um, and like fractions will work out like kind of how you expect. Uh, right, so if you take like a half times six, you get three, um, even though a half is five million and four, um, or five hundred million and four. So that's cool. Um, so let's use it to solve this problem. Uh, so what was what were we actually supposed to do? Uh, we read n, and then we read a and b, and then we print out um, n times you know, a choose b. So I'm going to pre-compute uh, fa, which is going to be the factorial of a. Um, and I'm also going to compute uh, inverse factorials. So we want 1 over the factorial of b um, and 1 over the factorial of a minus b. Okay. Uh, and these go up to 10 to the 6. and minus one factorial. Right, so base case zero, and then for all the notes, you know, from one up to 10 to the six, up to a million, uh, we can use this formula to compute it. This will be fast. Uh, I'll show a couple ways actually to compute the inverses. Um, here's the most obvious one. might be too slow, I'm not sure. Okay, cool. So it is too slow. Uh, and the reason it's too slow is that this part is kind of expensive. Right? Inverse is uh, not as cheap as the other operations because we need to do how to like a billion, which takes like log a billion time. Um, so there's actually a clever way to do this, which is that 1 over n factorial times n is 1 over n minus 1 factorial, right? So we can actually, so start at the back, compute 1 over uh, a million factorial, and then we can, that back to 1 inverse, and then we can use multiplies to convert, compute everything else. Um, let me show you what I mean. So start with uh, 1 over a million factorial. Right? That requires um, a pal. But to get 1 over a million minus 1, you just multiply 1 over a million factorial times a million. Uh, and you can just keep doing this the whole way down, right? all the way up to like 1 factorial. Uh, so this should be a lot faster, because it should be a lot faster if it worked. Um, one factorial times x plus one. Cool, then it 
on six, and this actually should pass. Um, cool. So yeah, this is all uh, very important to know, actually. Um, the, sort of the definition of binomial coefficients, which admittedly I only skimmed over. We'll probably see them in later problems. You know, actually see what they're good for. Here we just sort of have to take it on faith that they're good for something. They don't really tell us about that. Um, doing inverse, uh, doing division in modular arithmetic. This is a very important idea. Uh, it's super cool, I think, actually, that like fractions totally work with this. Um, and uh, this idea of like pre-computing factorials and using them to calculate binomial coefficients is actually super useful. Uh, right? Notice that we can get the binomial coefficients in constant time now. Now that we've pre-computed uh, the factorials and the factorial inverses. Um, because binomial coefficients are useful, which you'll have to take on faith uh, for now, but it's true. Um, and it's also cool that we can calculate the factorial inverses with just one actual call to inverse, and the rest, you know, just multiplies. Um, save some time, as we saw, because it was too slow you know, when we did all of the inverses. Um, so yeah, that's the problem.